Hello and welcome to Gabriel's 3D Printing. Today we'll be looking at this eagle uploaded by Strong Hero. First things first, we go down to the developer notes, see if they have any specifications. And they say eagle, so not too much, but that's more than fine. We can figure a few things on our own. Once you are ready, you're going to go up here to the download all files and click on that blue button. And then you'll be given a folder similar to this. It should only have one STL, so nice and simple. Just click and hold on it and drag it to your preferred slicer of choice and give it a few seconds to load in. Once the model is loaded in, you're going to notice one thing, and that thing is that this model is gigantic. And unless you have a oversized printer, you're more than likely not going to be able to print it at this height. So what we're going to do first is we're going to scale the model to make it a little smaller. And to do that, we click on the model. Then we're going to go to the second button down, which is the scale button. And then we're going to make sure that uniform scaling is set. So make sure this is checked. That means that all axes will be scaled to the same value, to the same amount. So scale it to whatever value you want. For me, I'm going to scale it down to a 40%. And in order to know how tall you have it, you can take a look at these numbers down here. The second value is your Y value. And it says that my model is roughly going to be 16 centimeters tall, or 163 millimeters. So scale it to whatever scale you want. Like I said, you can always check how tall it will be by looking at this middle number down here. All right, after we're done with that, we are now going to make sure the model is upright because as it is right now, it's uh, laying on its side and we don't want to print it that way. So in order to do that, you're going to click on the model and we're going to go down to the third button, which is rotate. And we're going to go to the third button on the right hand side, which is select face to align to the build plate. We're going to click on that. Next, we're going to move our mouse over the model. Just You don't have to click, just move your mouse over until those lines disappear. And uh, before we do this, I need you guys to notice that the bottom of the model is not flat. And that is 100% going to give us some issues with printing. Considering there's going to be some overhangs and th there's going to be just a little bit of issues with cleanup as well at the end of the model. So just keep that in mind. So uh, once you clicked on this button, we are now going to click anywhere on the bottom of the model. Just click and give it a few seconds because uh, this model is really big and there's a lot of detail, so it's going to take some time. But once you do that, it's going to align the model right up. So that's exactly how we want it. Next, we're going to click anywhere on the screen and we're going to right click now on the model. I'm going to click on uh, center selected model, which is the top button. That will basically put our model at the very middle of the uh, of the print bed and now we're going to click on the model and just verify that it is centered and whenever I clicked on it you see that it's not actually centered it's showing that you know it's a little off on the x and y direction so now we're going to go up here to the move button and make sure everything's set to zero 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 because we do want this model completely uh, centered now a quick thing you need to check for is make sure the model does look pretty flat because sometimes Whenever you do the bottom uh, alignment, it doesn't really get uh, too flat. And you're not going to have it perfect, because you can see here, mine's kind of hovering on the uh, right end. But I said that's probably going to be the best that you're going to get, considering the model is not completely flat. You can, if you want, drag the model down below the bed to make it completely flat. But, you know, that's going to be just more steps and a little bit more of a hassle. You're going to have part of the model cut off. So uh, for me, this is more than fine. Just to make sure it looks kind of flat and not completely hovering midair. But once you have that, you are set and now you are ready to mess with the print settings. For the print settings, we're first going to go to the profile to select a layer height. Now, I recommend a layer height of 0.2 millimeters, but you can go lower if you want to 0.28 millimeters if you're printing it at my scale, which is pretty big. If you have a mini one, stick with 0.2. But if you have it my scale or taller, feel free to go 0 0.28. There, all these details are pretty uh, pretty large, and they won't really be affected too much. So whatever layer height you want, uh, you know, knock yourself out. Choose whatever you need to, or whatever you like. But do keep in mind that if you do a thinner layer height, the time to print is going to take quite a bit longer. Now, once you click on the layer height, if this pops up, click on the discard button to erase all previous profile modifications. We're not going to mess with shell. We will go to infill. In order to save us some time, we're going to uh, change the infill density from whatever value you have 
down to 10%. That's just how much material is inside of the model. And you really don't need too much inside. So 10% is more than fine and that'll save you maybe an hour or two of printing. Next, we're gonna to go to the supports. Now, if you take a look around the model, there's quite a bit of red. So you 100% will need supports for the model. There's actually a lot of red. Now, the thing is, we're not gonna use regular supports. And the reason being is that if you use regular supports, there's there's a lot of areas that need like just supports at uh, just one little area, meaning you're gonna have a very long, thin support branching downwards all the way up and whenever you have anything that's too long and thin those supports can shake and move around and whenever you reach the actual elevated height you're gonna have some errors because the supports are, would have been wobbling and then you probably won't print your part correctly and then just a hassle and a complete waste of time so we're not going to use regular supports for this uh if you want and if you trust regular supports then go on ahead but I do not trust regular supports for this model. We're going to use tree supports, so make sure this is unchecked. Next, we're going to go to build plate adhesion. And if you take a look at the bottom of the model, you really do not need any build plate adhesion. If you feel like your bed has a poor adhesion and you don't want to risk it, then go and select a brim. But for me, uh, I really don't need any adhesion. I don't need any adhesion, so I'm going to leave it at skirt. Now we're going to go down to the experimental tab and select tree supports. If you don't see tree support, you're going to put your mouse over the experimental tab, click on the gear and search up tree support. Now you're going to make sure that's checked, but you're also going to make sure you also have a tree support branch angle and tree support branch distance enabled. So you need all three of these for this step. Close that. So click on the tree support. And it's probably going to bring you up, just scroll all the way back down to the experimental tab. And you're going to select now the tree support branch angle. Now, you can for this model, you can use the same angle you use for your regular supports. So whatever that is, type it in there. For me, I'm going to use 60 degrees for the overhang angle for my CR10 uh, mini. If you have like an Ender 3, you'll probably stick around the 55 range. Next, we're going to go to the tree support branch distance. And this is basically how far the tree branches are going to be. You should be more than fine at a three millimeter, no matter what printer you're using. For the CR10, you, you honestly can go up to five, but uh, I think three is a more and more safe and reliable bet. So I'm going to change that to three. And other than that, we are set. All you have to do now is click on the slice button and hold on before you leave. You will take this will probably take around 10 minutes to slice depending on how big you have the model because tree supports take a lot more processing power in order to generate rather than regular supports so i recommend you actually go eat something or uh, make a coffee or whatever you want get a snack because this slicing will take a while don't think that uh the program crashed or anything tree supports are usually uh harder to to generate so give it a few sec give it a few minutes basically to slice and uh, you should be done within 10 minutes or so after that extremely long uh slice time you should be given a time estimate of roughly 16 hours and five minutes but that will depend on your printer and the settings you use as well as the estimated filament usage of 93 grams now we always preview the print and take a look around see if anything weird or funky is going on this uh, processing layers might also take a little, but uh, it shouldn't be too bad. And you're going to see that your model is covered in supports, and these, once again, are called tree supports. And I said I highly recommend these for this model, just because it will uh, it'll help out quite a bit with the actual uh, overhang angles. And believe it or not, this is a lot quicker than just doing or using regular supports. I believe with regular supports, I had a hour to increase on the print time so this definitely helps you out with the removal i'm sorry with the uh with the actual overhangs and time that's good now all i have to do is save the file and send it over to your printer
here's the model straight off the build plate. As you see, it is completely enclosed with this tree support, so you're going to have to get all of these little uh, supports off the model before you get your eagle revealed. In order to do this, you're going to need a pair of wire cutters, some tweezers, 100% some safety goggles to protect your eyes because PLA is brittle, and some sandpaper near the end. You can also use a screwdriver, but I would be very careful when using any sort of a screwdriver like a flathead to remove supports because you could damage the model if you're not careful. This is 100% going to take you a pretty long time. For me, I think it took me roughly 45 minutes to an hour of just removing the supports. And that's because I kept getting lazy and was going pretty slow and trying to be very careful. I recommend you take it nice and easy and do take breaks because the longer you're doing this, the more bored and irritated you get and the more you hate supports. So, uh, you know, just do it for like 15 minutes and then take a break and then come back to it with a fresh set of eyes. It's definitely going to be a lot harder to remove supports from the top of the model than the bottom. So just keep that in mind. Once you do get to the bottom of the model, you're going to notice at the bottom there's a bunch of junk. You can clean that off just with your bare hands and with the wire cutters. You may need to sand the model a little bit at the end, so uh, I would recommend using maybe 400 grit sandpaper. At least that's what I use to smoothen out the bottom. One thing I did mess up on was at the bottom there's actually a plant that I completely forgot about. And you can see that if you bring up the STL. So while you're doing this i highly suggest you have the stl open just so you can visualize what's supposed to be where so you don't break off a actual model part that was meant or that you thought was a support once again take your time and do everything step by step you'll get it freed up eventually Here's the model once all the processing has been finished. It's roughly 16 centimeters tall and has no defects whatsoever. The quality is amazing and everything came out pretty good other than the fact that I did cut off one of the plants on accident thinking it was support. But in order to avoid that, once again, open the STL while you're doing this in order to actually know what's support and what's not. I really love the quality on it. it looks beautiful, stunning. And uh, there's really not much to say other than, you know, this is a beautiful model. Although it did take quite a bit of print time, it's still more than fine. Uh, it's definitely well worth it, especially after you paint it and give it a little bit of life with the acrylic paint. Highly recommend you print this model if you want it, but do be prepared to spend quite a bit of time on the processing. <laughs> 